wants to bring real reform, as he promised, to Americans. He should put critics of these different agencies in charge to an extent. Um, now, what do I mean by that? Well, we have people who like the libertarians, like Ron, Ron Paul, who would put in charge of Treasury. Uh, in the case of uh, the FCC, uh, you should consult the Electronic Frontiers Foundation uh, and with small business. We do not want an FCC that is Comcast friendly. We want an FCC that encourages competition. We have an absurd lockdown on our communication infrastructure by large capital that is not leading to innovation. We should have an open standard for a cell phone where you can roam across carriers, you can have small community carriers, uh, and, uh, and this uh, harmful uh, theft of our money by uh, auctioning off our airwaves. Um, and uh, uh, in the case, uh, I, I was in Hart that he consulted with Tulsi Gabbard. Um, so basically, Trump uh, is drawing people from the Tea Party movement. He's drawing people from potentially some people from the progressive movement, if he won. Uh, he interviewed Tulsi Gabbard. Uh, then he's interviewing and looking at people from the inside. And uh, what we want to make sure is that he does not stack the deck with the same group of people that have led us to where we're at now. And m my main criticism of these people is the amount of violence and destruction that they have waged in the world. And I have the basic instinct that uh, I used to be in the travel business long ago. And this has been a calamity, what I've seen. Uh, I switched to technology around the time that we started bombing the world so that all the countries I used to send people to, the more exotic ones, the routes are closed now. So many places are closed or difficult to access. Algeria, Libya, Egypt, the Middle East, Afghanistan, uh, uh, Pakistan. Um, that's what, just one area of the world. That's the main problem area. Um, so I have this uh, intuition that Trump, as a hotel man, knows that war isn't good for business, that we're not really interested in promoting that side of the country, uh, the uh, the war side of the country. Totally non-productive. Guards us from harm, but sometimes uh, it uh, bureaucracies want to perpetuate themselves, and the bureaucracy of murder, which is what war is when it is pursued beyond its necessary uh, defensive means, it's just state murder, is the most uh, unrighteous livelihood imaginable. So, on the intelligence agency side, uh, Mr. Trump has to realize we can eradicate Al-Qaeda, we can eradicate ISIS as uh, uh, armed threats interested in waging mass war, in being the sorts of organizations that we really need to spend a lot of our resources on. We can defang this thing, and this can be done through peace over generations. Uh, and addressing the socioeconomic underlying conditions as, and not allowing invasion capitalism to wreak havoc on all these countries. So you have the Ron Paul movement. You've also got a group called the Veterans for Intelligence, what are they, Veteran Intelligence Professionals for Sanity, which includes Thomas Drake, who had a system that was 1% the cost of our current bulk surveillance collection called a Thin Thread or something like that. Uh, that was vastly more effective, or so they say. Uh, and um, then you've got, of course, uh, Ray McGovern, uh, who has um, uh, tried to uh, shed the light on the uh, destruction that the neoconservatives have uh, waged on our uh, poor, distracted planet, and uh, how he feels that uh, a lot of these agencies have gotten things wrong, that they're top brass, that they're political, have ruined them. Sort of culture of get me the answer that I want, which also happened during Reagan times as well. There was uh, the uh, uh, fake Soviet, exaggerated Soviet build-up threat that was promoted by the uh, neoconservatives. They like Jesse Ventura or Ralph Nader. Like Ray McGovern to uh, run CIA or uh, Thomas Drake to run NSA. Uh, uh, people that can really, uh, really uh, now 
you might also just consult with them about whom they think would be the best to run these things. You need to talk to critics of these entrenched systems that have taken us in the wrong direction. Uh, so the people that run the world are remarkably constituted in these uh, Council on Foreign Relations, Trilateral Commissions, and Bilderberg. And what we need is not be paranoid of these groups. We need to get progressive uh, geniuses to battle their arguments in these groups. But in order to do that, we may have to switch what we consider the most important groups because these were Rockefeller endowed organizations. Uh, and uh, we may want to find a different group to be the locus of our foreign policy establishment. But in economics and foreign policy, the really interesting voices are not represented on these groups. So we don't want to recruit a lot of them uh, because they've led to this uh, neoliberal, neoconservative uh, invasion capitalism model uh, where we've gradually had all our rights stripped away, whether it's by deliberate uh, act with the Patriot Act or by side effect. As a Republican presidential elect do. Um, he's got people like Giuliani and Gingrich uh, and whose worldviews are not the same as uh, Donald Trump's uh, was elected to, to, uh, to prosecute. They are more closely aligned, especially Giuliani, with the neoconservatives. And a lot of the people that he's doing this uh, fellow he's bringing in for CIA is a uh, neoconservative. Mr. Trump, you can do whatever you want. You owe nothing to anybody. So why not build a cabinet of the best people that are critics of the system, at least one-third, uh, and then uh, at least one-third to con represent the people that put you in power. And I would advocate that the progressive movement by not latching on to Clinton, uh, for, I voted for Jill Stein, for example, uh, should have a seat at the table as well because we were part of the process that brought Donald Trump to power, whether for better or for worse. Uh, for me, I could not vote or endorse Clinton, although in the end, on the very last state election, two hours before the polls closed, the East Coast, I said that I thought the people she would bring into power would be a better group to occupy these 4,000 jobs than the people Trump was going to bring into power, so please prove me wrong. I think I made my point. My name is Alexander Hagen. Good night and good luck.